What's up, guys? On this episode, we've got our first guest of season two. This guest is very special to me as it's one of my good friends and best mates from my time living in New Zealand. Scott is a sports media guru turned Great Barrier Reef underwater photographer. I hope you'll enjoy this podcast with special guest Scott Lavelle. This is episode 21. This is episode 21. Welcome to the Eco Conscious Diver Show. I'm your host, Caitlin, Patty Scuba instructor, scientific diver, and science communication specialist. I'm here to remind you that being eco conscious is cool. Learning about the environment can be fun and climate change isn't a dirty phrase. Each week, I'll be teaching you how to use your unique skills for marine conservation and giving you insight into past and present conservation stories so that you can create epic change in your own life and become the best version of yourself possible. Are you ready to dive? Hey, Scott, how are you doing? Hello, Caitlin. I'm very good, thank you. Thanks for inviting me on. I'm a bit excited and nervous, but yeah, it should be good fun. Awesome. Well, yeah, I'm so, so excited to have you on. I know this episode is a little bit special um, because we've known each other for a while now. Um, We were actually flatmates in New Zealand. Yep. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So, and actually after that, we both went on to become uh, scuba instructors. I know, yeah. No, so, I, I, I didn't but, expect that for myself. I know that was always like a massive dream and passion, even when you're in New Zealand. But yeah, I never saw that for myself. So maybe that was a bit your fault as well. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And then you actually ended up going to um, a place specifically, you know, for photography and videography, right? Yeah. On the Barrier Reef. It's so awesome. It's crazy to think like the things that we've done since we lived together, you know? Yeah, no, it was really cool. Like, obviously, my background in was in video and photography, and the diving was just basically an accident. Um, so to be able to combine the thing I loved and bring that into the diving world, yeah, it was an absolute dream. But I'm sure we'll go into that in a bit, bit more detail later. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we'll start with the intro question, which is, what is your favorite marine species and why? Uh, well, I was speaking to you just before we came on because I was a bit nervous because I'm not the most knowledgeable. I'm not going to know every fish out there. So it's going to be a basic answer. But coming as a photographer, um, it has to be a turtle. Like Whenever you saw a turtle, that was always the, the winner. That brought in the money um, and made everyone's <laughs> day. So you knew if you got a picture with a customer and a turtle, that was always going to be a winner of a photo. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've got to say the turtle. It's It's pretty basic. But, yeah, that's what I'm going with. No, that's for sure. And it's it's definitely majestic <laughs> when you see a turtle like, you know, going up for air. I feel like yeah. that's such a fantastic moment. But um it's funny you say that because one of my favorite photos I have from the Great Barrier Reef um is actually a photo of me with a turtle. <laughs> a turtle. Yeah, no. And I saw, yeah, hundreds, hundreds of turtles, but I still got excited. Every time I saw a turtle, I was still like, oh like it's, it still gave me that same buzz every time I saw it. So yeah, so beautiful. I love it. That's so awesome. Yeah, there's definitely some creatures that you just can't get over. It's like every time you see a dolphin, it's also pretty majestic too, oh, right? Yeah. Like, it's old. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So um, let's jump straight into it. Um, hmm. How did you get into scuba diving? And also, how did you get into underwater photography? Take us through that story. Yeah, so it was all a bit of an accident, really. But um, I got into diving th- through a mutual friend of ours, Ryan, um, who we also lived with in New Zealand. Um, and I, I wasn't really interested in it at all. I was on holiday in Thailand with him. We'd sort of just started traveling together um, and became friends. And he'd, he'd met someone in my uncle's bar. My uncle's got a bar out there and someone had come into his bar and um, uh, Ryan was already an, an advanced scuba, uh, scuba diver, I think. And he was like, you've got to give it a go. You've got to give it a go. And I had no interest at all, no interest. But he was going. I didn't have anything to do for the next couple of days if I didn't do it. So he dragged me along to this open water course um, and pretty much changed my life, really, looking back at what I achieved afterwards. Yeah, so if if he hadn't dragged me along to do that open water course in the first place, um, yeah, life could have been very different. 
Um, and then it led me to sort of, I did my advanced, I did my um, or everything up to my dive master. I still did that in Thailand. Um, but I came back to England for a bit after traveling for a while and then decided to go out to Australia. Um, and again, it was an accident. I, I didn't really know what I was going to do out there, um, but I knew I had this dive master qualification. So I thought, you know, what? I, I didn't want to do a proper job. I'd done that in England for a little bit. I didn't want to sit at a computer. Um, so I just started searching around and I found this incredible company called Skibabo um, that I can't recommend them highly enough. And um, they do dive master traineeships where they train you up, you go on the boat, you take photographs for them, make them some money. And in return, they pay for you to become a scuba instructor. Um, so like, I felt like they were getting the bad deal. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was getting to take photos and become a scuba instructor and get a little bit of money. And yeah, they were covering all my costs. So I was like, it was incredible. So yeah, if there's anyone at the dive master stage at the moment in Australia traveling, um, I'd highly recommend getting in touch with Scubabo. Yeah, because <laughs> um, yeah, they're incredible. That's so awesome. So you definitely got spoiled early on. Like I know. In, you know, Thailand and then went straight to the Great Barrier Reef. It's like. That's <laughs> why I'm never going to dive in England. Yeah, I've come back and I'm like, oh, you could do diving here. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> absolutely not. You have to get dive suit certified. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a challenge. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> well, I have heard the photography in England um, is pretty special because they have yeah. megafauna. So like, you know, the oh. giant squids and stuff yeah. like that. So it can oh. be kind of insane. <sighs> Uh, it's tempting, but that I'm such a wuss for the cold. Uh, yeah, and it, and I think below like Australia temperatures, and I'm like, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Um, so, what was it like um, working somewhere like that, doing underwater photography? Uh, it was so good. Like, I loved it so much, and I'll never be able to say how good it was. But the main reason I've done both the things in my life, video. Um, and TV and diving were for the social elements. So as much as I love sort of filming and editing stuff or a, a scuba diving under the water, like I say, I'm not an expert at all the marine creatures. It's always been about the social element um, and the people that have been around. And I've been lucky to sort of surround myself with great people. And it was the same again, like living on a boat. We'd go and live on the boat for five days a week. Um, so you're, you're out at sea uh, in Cairns, Australia, Great Barrier Reef, five days a week, diving four or five times a day um, and just surrounded by similar like minded people traveling and yeah, being again, uh, three or four great meals a day, um, beautiful sunshine. And yeah, the lifestyle was incredible. Like I know people are probably questioning why I've come back now, but it's yeah it's it's a lifestyle that i don't think i've i've told people as of since i've come back i'm never going to get a better job ever again and i'm kind of like accepting of that i'm like uh, <laughs> un underwater photographer on the great barrier reef done cool i just need to find my next thing and yeah uh, and be content with that that's so cool you totally brought me back uh to our time in new zealand saying hmm. like all the cool people and everything you would always yeah. say that I, yeah, that's, I've always been about that. I think yeah, <laughs> whatever you throw yourself into, whatever your passion is, as long as there's good people there, then yeah, you'll always have a good time. It doesn't matter what you're doing, what job you're doing. And I think especially in times like this, when obviously life's a bit tougher for everyone, like yeah, it doesn't matter if you're the guy like yeah, working at the supermarket or or still working on the Great Barrier Reef. As long as the people are good, life life's always a lot easier when you've got good people that can make you laugh and smile. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's one great thing about just the dive industry in general. You know, when you're in underwater photography, you're definitely a sector of the dive industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. And it just attracts so many different types of people. You know, I mean, all sorts of different backgrounds, educations, where they're from. I mean, I, I feel like I've met some incredible people that I wouldn't have met elsewhere just working on dive boats. Yeah, <laughs> you know? no, definitely. Because well, that was the bonus of being in Cairns. Like, everybody I met that was, wasn't working on the boat was on holiday. So like, everyone was there. You don't go on holiday to have a bad time. Like, everyone was there because they wanted to have a good time. And also, like, I know people 
will say they're not vain, but everyone's a little bit vain and everyone loves their picture being taken. So I feel like the underwater photographer was always like the most popular person on the boat because he's the guy with the expense or he or she is the most uh, the guy with the most expensive camera on the boat that can take the pretty photos. So um, that was always a benefit as well that, yeah, you were probably the guy that everyone wanted to come to. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we let like this just reminds me of when me and my parents were on the Great Barrier Reef diving yeah. and we got the best photos of like our family and yeah. everything. And I remember us like love like I remember what the girl looks like. You're right. She was like the most popular yeah. boat. I don't even remember what our dive guide looked like, you know? Yeah, that's it. Like my dad like was like, let's go give her a good tip because she got such great photos. <laughs> No, that's cool because, yeah, you have the opportunity to make someone's holiday, which is really cool. Um, yeah, you're, you're, they're going away with something and taking something back. But they, like people would say, oh, I'm going to get this put on a canvas in my living room or like I'm going to get this printed or I'm going to do this or that with it. I'm going to show my nan. And that's just really cool that, yes, there's, there's several probably houses around the world with like some, a photo I've taken that I'm unaware of um, in someone's living room right now. And I just think, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> that is really cool yeah. you like get to be a piece of their life you know yeah i like that yeah i like like being able to affect people's lives in a positive way that's awesome so you know because i'm always looking to you know provide value and give back uh, to people who are interested in getting into these fields mm. i'd love to ask you um you know if you have any tips for people that are interested in breaking into underwater photography yeah but I think it's obviously so much easier now these days as well with the sort of the accessibility to equipment, like you've got the GoPro and everything like that. In terms of breaking in, like, well, like I said, I I'd definitely recommend the, the route that I took with Scubarbo and doing the Dive Master internship um, because they gave me so much freedom. It was like day one, like the camera's probably worth about five ten thousand dollars you know it's a lot but they they had so much faith and belief in me from day one they're like here's the camera um this button does this this does this and this and just having that like you, it just made me feel a lot more relaxed about the situation going into it um but in terms of if you're not going to take that route there's there's so many cameras out now so there's so many cameras out there now like the gopro and various other small cameras like the camera you've got is it the tg5 is it you've got uh, tg6 tg6 sorry okay um that allow you to just have that sort of entry into underwater photography and because they're digital you can take hundreds and hundreds of photos like that's what i can say i've, I've taken thousands of photos you know um but you're probably only going to see about a hundred of them because thousands of them are all so terrible um <laughs> so i think it's um, that's what i loved it was about tweaking the settings and getting a bit better and like working out what worked for you. Um, I think underwater photography is so much harder than anything you can do on land. Like I said, I came from a background in video above land and the similarities were a lot fewer than I thought they would be. Like it was a lot harder to perfect the underwater photo just because the weather conditions would change so dramatically. Your depth color changes were so dramatic and yeah obviously it's a constant moving environment and conditions um so it was it was tougher to get used to than i thought but like i say just keep taking photos take as many as you can um and play around with the manual settings that's what i'd recommend people getting into people that came on the boat i'd always yeah get your manual settings in take take a load of bad photos get slightly better slightly better slightly better uh, and get a red lens that's the, uh, yeah the amount of people that wouldn't buy a red lens from me on the boat because of that. I think they felt that I was maybe like conning them out of it. I'd try and convince them to buy this random bit of red plastic. And it's like, you want me to give you money for a random bit of red plastic? And I'd be like, well, go for a dive, come back. We'll have a look at your photos and then I'll get you to buy this red lens off of me because I, I wasn't conning anyone out of anything. It didn't really benefit me selling a red lens because well, I know they were so cheap anyway, and I wasn't getting commission off red lenses, but I'd always say, please, if you haven't got them, please, please, please get the red lens because it's gonna it's gonna add a world of difference to your photos. Oh, and in the post editing, it's so much easier. Yeah. Um, it's funny, I like the first time I went and bought a red lens for my GoPro just in Australia, I went downtown in Sydney to like a camera shop and I paid like $80 for one yeah. of those 
lenses, I got totally ripped off. And then I went home and I look on Amazon and it's like 15 bucks. <laughs> That's what I'd say. Yeah. If there's anyone listening, yeah, don't buy it from like the actual touristy places. If you can buy the exact same thing on eBay um, for about, yeah, three pound at Amazon or wherever your local cheap shop is. But yeah, go on Amazon or eBay and buy the cheap one because it's red plastic at the end of the day. And yeah, they're all doing a very similar job. You obviously get your different shades of reds and magentas, um, but your basic, basic one that's going to make a world of difference you can get for a couple of dollars I think yeah yeah for sure yeah um, and since you you brought it up I'd love for you to tell us um your background in terrestrial photography um yes like so my career path sort of from out of school is I was uh, I'm living in the UK in London and I ended up working for Sky Television so they're the biggest sort of broadcaster um, satellite broadcaster in the UK um, and I ended up working there for seven years. I was on a live sports show, a Saturday morning sports show, sort of mainly soccer or football um, and I, yeah I loved that um, and I did that for seven years but then yeah I, I I just decided that I wanted to go and do a bit of traveling, go and do a bit of exploration and, that, and that's what led me to New Zealand with yourself um, but also after television, I did, and I came back from New Zealand, I did more sort of digital video and social video, staying in the sports um, sports sector, but making videos more for online and digital. Um, like I said, it was it's always been about creating stuff for my mates and other people. And sort of when I was 18 to 20, I wanted to create stuff for my mates and that was okay because Sky was available in the UK for my mates. But sort of after I went traveling because I had mates all over, I wanted to create stuff that I could share with my mates in New Zealand or I could share with my mates, you know, in Thailand. Um, so I wanted to make that move over to sort of, yeah, uh, online video and digital video. Well, it's interesting now everything's online. You know, yeah. I look at my advertising career too and it started out in magazines. I worked yeah. for magazines. You know, and now nice. it's like that's obsolete, you know. Seems a different so, world, yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, I remember us like creating videos just being at our flat, like mm, yeah, like, I, showing each other, editing them and stuff. And I, I feel like that was kind of my first try at like creating content, like yeah. purpose. No, I remember you'd show me your sort of your dive videos and yeah, you'd come back from all these like dive trips and you'd have all these great videos. Yeah, I remember that. They were great. Yeah, it's interesting. So yeah, that's def that was definitely like a turning point where I was like, oh, I really like making content like videos and yeah. stuff. And I like the sort of the building a community around video element as well. So sort of the video just being the start of it. Um, and I think especially in niche areas such as diving, like I know when we, we spoke the other day and you're saying about the, sort of the, the size of the dive community and the sort of the nicheness of it being so small. But I think that's becoming more and more important. You need to sort of find your niche and sort of thrive within that smaller niche instead of trying to please everyone anyway. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, being able to create a community around one passion being being diving um, is, yeah, is great. And video is becoming more and more important to be able to create those communities but well, yeah you know particularly with the sort of the growth of your instagram page and various other things yeah yeah for sure and i mean not to get too much into the marketing of it of course but you know there's a lot of noise out there um mm. on social media the internet is completely flooded with everything and so um you know niching down as they call it in in the marketing world um you know have claiming a small sector of an industry um and in my case particularly you know marine conservation within scuba diving yeah uh, it's a good way to really reach the target people that are going to enjoy what you're putting out there so yeah it's uh you know the scuba industry is getting bigger i can definitely tell um just with the growth of all these different communities you know girls that scuba you love know, that yeah yeah. is it getting younger do you feel like that's one of the things when I first did my open water and I obviously left it for about 18 months two years or whatever but one of the not negatives but one of the things I didn't feel is that it appealed enough to the younger person whatever and like a lot of the, lot of the dive industry and I think that's where Australia was great I was like oh wow there's there's young people in diving and there's people that want to affect change and all that because everything I'd seen previously was quite an older generation and I hope that doesn't offend anyone listening to this podcast but yeah do, do you feel like well what you're doing is definitely helping to bridge that gap 
Um, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, interesting that you say that because I felt like when we were like, you know, backpacking or traveling, mm -hmm. we were like the older crowd, right? Because we were uh, like late twenties, <laughs> yeah, thirty, and a lot of the people we were hanging around, they're like twenty two. We're like, oh man. <laughs> yeah. um, but interestingly, like um, in the Keys, um, specifically like in Key Largo, where I see a lot of people doing their instructor um, internships and stuff, a lot, I, I mean, a lot of them are like 21, 22, 23. Oh, great. That's cool. So I, I do think it's, um, maybe it's trending now more that. Yeah, I'd love that. Photos on social media, you yeah. know? Yeah. No, yeah, I find that. And that was one of the sort of the number one requests. Like I'd get so many sort of, yeah, uh, girls in their late teens wanting that one photo for their Instagram. And if, yeah, <laughs> if you didn't get their right side or whatever, they'd be so upset. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I, the amount of, yeah, mainly girls, but some males as well, but coming up, yeah, they, they just wanted that one Instagram photo to take away. And that was, <laughs> yeah, the, the one thing that I'd have to try and capture in a day. And you'd have to take about 12 for them to be happy with one. But um <laughs> yeah, that was, that was also a key part of the job. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, you know, if you think about like, regardless of what people think of Ocean Ramsey, you know, people mm. say one or the other, but I do think that she made it more visible that women could be involved in marine biology and conservation Brilliant, because yeah. she, so she went so worldwide and people saw themselves like, oh, you know, that could be me. I could do something like that, you know? Yeah. So Brilliant. I do think more women in the industry too so yeah, love that and i know you did your podcast with girls at scuba sarah um I, I, as a fellow brit i'd love to meet and chat with her one day but yeah she looks brilliant as well for what she's doing yeah she does have some co-ed trips we could book one of those mm. yeah um, i'd be so up for that yeah <laughs> definitely cool. um so how do you think that underwater photographers can contribute to marine conservation well uh, talking about photographers and videographers obviously I've done a lot of video as well, but various the, the amount of documentaries that you see coming through now, just showing the actual damage and being able to tell that story from 40, 50, 60 years ago and sort of the, the damage that is being done or I'm using the Great Barrier Reef as, as a main example and sort of how that's changing. But being able to document that and show that, OK, you're not seeing that change every day, but this this is real you know the, the the damage that's being done like every day is real even though you're not you're not seeing it actually with your eyes but we've got this video footage of the exact same spot from 30 years ago and this is what it looks now and if we don't do anything about it like it's 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 going to be destructive and like the amount of joy it brings people we need to try and do everything we can to like to save it or, and and restore it um, I know I, I definitely saw slight changes during my time there, only small ones, but you, you do notice the damage that's being done and, yeah, everything we can do, anything we can do to to help stop that, then, yeah, if, if video can help. Like, if, that, if the video or the Netflix documentary just changes one person's opinion and provides one positive change, then that's that's got to be a great thing. Yeah, for sure. And I do feel like it's sort of, um, you know, an out of sight, out of mind thing where mm -hmm. like people don't see images or videos of the ocean and they're not scuba divers. They would never even know what's going on under there. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And that as well. And and one other thing that sort of one other thing would be that it sounds bad, but you almost maybe need to make marine biology and the sort of eco-conscious diver lifestyle sexy like it's really bad but like if, if you try to drill it home to them with yeah with, with your, <laughs> the face of um marine biology but yeah you, you do you do have to kind of make it sexy and make it appealing that putting your trash in the bin is a good thing like you should you shouldn't have to tell anyone that but you almost need like it influences young people today people on instagram making putting your trash in the being sexy which is outrageous but it's kind of what you have to do yeah yeah for sure i mean i you know i see a whole like activism you know community especially for marine conservation um trash pickups the five minute beach cleanups all sorts of stuff <clears throat> and i don't know that it's necessarily sexy but i would say people are making it into an event yeah share on social media um yeah. 
you know, maybe it's it's sort of similar to like people showing before and after gym photos or photos of yeah. them like at the gym. It's yeah. like it doesn't count if you didn't post a photo of it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know what that's all about, but yeah, I've never never been to the gym. But yeah, I, I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I post that on my story because yeah. it looks incredible. I'm like, yeah. okay, if people don't see me posting at the gym, then they'll, they'll think, you know. <laughs> but I guess if that helps them and that makes things better, then that's okay. Like, it's not for me to judge. I, I don't care. It's not going to affect my day if, or if you're posting a gym photo or if people feel better about what they're doing by posting videos or photos, then that's cool as well. And again, if, if that can affect one person, you're going to get a couple, maybe a couple of negative photos saying you might be doing it for the wrong reasons or this or that. But like, if you're causing change, like then brilliant. I'm all for that. Yeah. But I mean, it's, you know, it does catch on. Like, I mean, since we're already using the gym metaphor, you mm. know, if I see someone else working out on social media, I'm more likely to be like, Oh, like maybe I should turn off Netflix and go work out. The guilt you factor. Know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like, if you see people doing like a trash pickup on a Saturday, you know, then you're kind of like, oh, maybe I should go do that, you know? I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's what I, I've loved that I've seen that you've done various tr trash events and getting people over for a few drinks after. And I think, again, creating that social element, that's, I think, what's needed just to make it relevant and cool for today's today's generation really yeah did, did that yeah. Make sound sound old today's generation but yeah <laughs> i mean you know. we're definitely social creatures you know yeah. and um, if the pandemic hasn't shown us anything else it's definitely that we have found yeah. to connect with other people more than ever before online yeah. because we crave being social with other people you know yeah. so, and it is going to be that sort of when we come out the other side sort of the way that jobs and the way human behavior evolves as well and i'm like that's kind of interesting how like the human design could contribute to conservation i'm over here thinking like i need to get someone that's like an expert on human design on the podcast yeah there's a whole science to that um so of course um if you guys have been following along on social media or you're subscribed on the email list which you should be um, you have probably seen a little bit about our upcoming underwater photography course. It is called Eco-Conscious Underwater Photography. Um, and Scott and I have teamed up on this. Yeah. Um, he's more the photography and I am the eco-conscious <laughs> side. Um, but we take you through really an entire introduction into underwater photography and how to do it um, with marine conservation in mind. Um, so we're really, really excited about this. Um, Scott, do you want to tell them a little bit about um, some of the things you've contributed to the course? Yeah, so the, the things I've been most excited about that I've done so far is the various sort of Lightroom tutorials I've done. So we're going to be yeah going through the basics of Lightroom and then some more sort of advanced tutorials at tweaking your underwater photos and sort of the speciality behind um, underwater photography like we spoke about previously. Um, we're also going to include some Lightroom presets um some gear guides i guess you could call them sort of some cameras that we would recommend um and tips on how to use them um yeah there's there's going to be enough content to keep you busy um for the rest of this pandemic um so that once you once we come out of it and we get back in the water you can go and buy a new camera and yeah go and put your skills to the test yeah yeah and you know the most common question i've actually gotten about the course so far is do i need a camera to purchase this course no um, absolutely not yeah it has so much information about entry-level cameras and then mm. advanced cameras if you're looking to update so you can have a camera or not um, to take this course and it'll definitely get you started either way um we also go uh deep into marine conservation and the history of it with underwater photography um, and also into how to share your photos online for marine conservation and even how to monetize them. So yeah. there's a lot of value in this course. Um, you can find the link to it at www.eco-consciousdiver.com slash online-learning. And I think that could be one of the 
the real bits of information that people take away like you say the, the marketing bit and being able to monetize that for today like we were just talking about the younger diver people wanting stuff for their instagram sort of being in a pandemic and not really like looking for ways to make some extra income um especially if people that are struggling for work at the moment and doing something you love as well is always going to be easier so hopefully people can take that away in terms of yeah being able to then go and make their own content and being able to maybe make content for brands or being able to make content for yeah, other people and businesses and yeah i think that the, there'll be skills in there as well that people can use beyond diving i think which will be cool as well yeah, absolutely. And of course, you know, I always uh, kind of lean towards the the marketing aspect of all of it. Yeah. Um, and I've definitely included some exact breakdowns of how I've shared my stuff um, and gotten more interaction with it and that sort of stuff. Kind of, a, a you know, a little teaser of how yeah. you can use social media um, to create a bigger impact, which is what we're really yeah. all trying to do, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Trying to get your message out there. And I think uh, that's probably the most economical way of getting your message out to hundreds, thousands, millions of people. Um, yeah. Social media, it's a free platform. And like I said, what you've done with your platform is incredible. Like, I love it so much, like building a personality around sort of uh, uh, something that's uh, to use the word sexy again sorry but to something that's l less sexy but then to build a personality and a lifestyle around it is is brilliant yeah what you've done is really cool oh thank you scott i appreciate mm -hmm. that well i've sure had a lot of fun doing it it's crazy to think um i kind of started all this you know maybe two years ago now um eco conscious diver launched one year ago nice uh, and it's completely changed my life. Hopefully it's changed some other people's lives too. <laughs> what are your plans for 2021 for Eco Conscious Diver? I'm sure people will want to know. Well, of course, um, you and I are gearing up to launch this course. Yes. Um, it's open for pre-enrollment now, but it'll be launching January 10th, 2021. Um, I do get a ton of people asking me um, for help with marketing and creating an impact. So that might be my next course. Nice. how to create an impact with social media. Um, hopefully people would use that to create a sustainable business or marine conservation or something like that. Mm. Um, and I, you know, would love to do um, a small like three day weekend um, every couple of months in the Bahamas to do some shark yes. ecology lab type stuff. We're still um, sign me up. I'm in. That sounds brilliant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we've yeah. spoken about trips as well. Like, we, yeah, let's try and get some trips going if people are interested. Yeah, yeah let's get I people know. take we've people all around the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's almost a year since we were in Thailand together, which has gone pretty quick, despite what has happened in the last twelve months. Um, yeah, that has whizzed by. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's like we got that trip in, in like at the last. Oh, I know. Before travel shut down, so we're really lucky. I feel like, you know, for the first part of quarantine, I was just still excited and looking at my photos from Thailand. So it kind of <laughs> yeah. helped, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we'll, we'll be out there soon. So yeah, twenty twenty one, we'll get a few trips in, and yeah, we'll make sure those happen. Yeah, maybe we can get Scott to do a uh, underwater photography lab for you guys on a yes, trip. I would love that, please. Yeah, let's do that. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I'm so excited to share this project that we've been working on together, Scott, yes. with everybody. Um, and, you know, I want to thank you for being a new part of the Eco Conscious Ever community. No, and for thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thank you so much for being on. Um, that's a wrap. We love you guys so much. Thanks for tuning in. And thank you, Scott. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast and learned some valuable information about the journey of conservation. This is a constant process of learning, growth, and understanding. Please leave a review if you can and go to www.eco-consciousdiver.com to check out other podcasts and all the other things we've got going on there. See you next week.